So now that I know all this data and we know the science behind energy systems and the gears that I need to be training, I need to be doing a 13 week periodized program. What is the best way to design a periodized program? Oh, fantastic. You know, it's, what I love about these questions are everything we're talking about is grounded in the stuff we're supposed to have learned on day one of our degree, day one of our PT certs. You see things called, you know, program design. Yeah. <laughs> Training principles. And what we're really talking about here is periodization. Periodization. So, you know, when I look at it, let's back up the lens a little bit here. If someone comes to me and says, hey, I want to train for a triathlon, what's the main considerations? I'm going to have a list of about eight questions in my head. You know, the first one is, do you have the capacity to, to do the distance? You know, we break down the disciplines, the distance in each discipline, transitions, break. You've done it. I don't have to worry about that. You've done it. So that's a tip for me. Next one is, I need to get a measurement. Well, we've done that. We know your VO2, we know your max heart rate, your recovery heart rate, your rate tick. Then we're going to start looking at the deep state. Do you have the specific power when you need it? So you might have a big engine, you may have a great threshold, but you lose power on the sprint or the hill climb on the bike. That's a huge limiting factor. Do you have the specific technique and skill? Great, you've got the engine, but you've never swum before. Well, you're going to have to work for technique coach because <laughs> as a conditioning coach, I can't teach you to swim. I know you've got a swim coach. You've had a swim coach, so tick. The next one on that list is periodization. How do I start to put together this program and the essence the key to periodization is start from the end and work backwards one of the, the biggest failures in people's periodization attempts is they start on day one and say okay for three weeks I'll, I'll do some base building and then for three weeks I'll do some anaerobic training and then for, and before you know, they've run out of time you've got to start at the end so when we look at periodization what are the main components macro cycle What's the big picture? I'm running the triathlon in 13 weeks. Let's chunk that up into mesocycles. Mesocycles are what's the main theme for this phase of training? Is it endurance? Is it base building? Is it hypertrophy? Is it power? Is it recovery? What's the main phase? Could be two weeks, could be eight weeks. Next chunk, what's the micro cycle? What am I doing in the next seven to 10 days to achieve that goal of power? of recovery and then you go to the smallest which is the unit that's the fourth part of this what am i doing in today's session macro meso micro unit if you start with the unit no idea of what it's doing to the macro you're going to get lost so when we look at yours we break that down macro meso micro unit and we also look at the fact that when you're doing an event whether it's soccer whether it's triathlon you're going to have to look at there are certain phases of competition. You've got general development. That's the first thing you're going to do. Am I at, are the general physiological, biological, mental factors of performance getting conditioned? Do I have a big enough base? Do I have the right mobility? Do I have the right... You know, the basics. Building the car, making sure it's got a, a good suspension and the tyres are pumped up and it's filled with gas. And then you go into next, which is specific development. Okay, I've got general development... But do I, you know, do I have the power to climb that hill on that bike? Have I worked on bricks yet? Do I have my technique down for the swim? It's a little bit more specific, right? Then you get into pre-competition. So we might call that peaking. I've got to start getting ready for game day. And then we've got tapering, which is, all right, now i just got to, i got to hold this and recover so that on the day that it counts, I'm locked and loaded and ready to go. Does that make sense? Yeah, completely. So, you know, that, that, that literally can take people many, many hours to do. So we've kind of condensed it into a couple of minutes there. So we've started with the end, we work backwards. So in your general development, we're going to work on things like building your VO2. Right? Excellent, yeah. Really simple. I mean, that's the first chunk in your program is, I've run this race, I've got the technique, I've done the transitions, I need a bigger engine. Great. So that's what we're going to do in general development. Going into specific development, I'm going to look at what is your weakness. And yeah. <laughs> looking at what you've done in the past and looking at your times and what you want to achieve, you've got a good VO2, you've got a great anaerobic threshold. 
we can do a bit more with your VO two, but I don't think that's your limiting factor. What do you, what do you think might be one or two of your limiting factors, given the data that we've got? Well, I mean, given that I'm trying to do better than I did before, I would definitely say speed and power output. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. The, 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 for you, there's going to be two things on the table. Can I crank more power and more speed at the same intensity? So if you're just below threshold, because once you tip past threshold, you start to want to guess, can I crank more power, more watts on the bike, more speed on the run, right? Yeah. Then can I recover quick enough to go again? So for me, I think we should look at speed and power and recovery as the, the two limiting factors. Because we are going to work on increasing your VO2 a little bit, but at the end of the day, I think those two might just become uh, the single biggest difference between last year's performance and this year's performance.